There is nothing neutral about the movement of people. There's nothing apolitical about the creation of music. The United States is a conglomeration of massive waves of history. Well, any traditional music is, is part of a continuing stream of consciousness. And if it's a product of migration, it would have a lot of meaning suffused in it. The important thing is to connect the dots, to look at our history, which is a cultural history unlike any other nation. What reflecting on migration does, it requires us to sit in the fullness of the pain of that experience in order to really appreciate the beautiful things that emerge from it. I think the reason why so many jazz musicians have roots to the Southern experience is that that is where I think a truly organic black cultural form developed. In the moment of the Great Migration, people knew they were doing something that was unprecedented. Because there had been such restriction on African American mobility for such a long time after the end of slavery, they had to be really aware that something was shifting in the country. Part of leaving the South was the terror that was created in the South. The terror of oppression, the terror of violence, and what that does for generations, people trying to escape for generations. And here's a moment where millions of people decide enough is enough, and I have enough to get out. When you think about all of the musical potential that was unleashed when people had the opportunity to leave the South, commercialize their work, and popularize their work, whether it's Mahalia Jackson coming to Chicago and revolutionizing gospel music, the influence of Barry Gordy and Motown. You have a jazz musician is moving up from Kansas City, coming up to New York, sharing the music. The blues taking the boat up the Delta, finding its way to Detroit, Motown bursting. <laughs> For people who had been so constrained in their everyday life, people were remaking their identities during the Great Migration. But the thing they never believed behind is the sound they heard from where they were from. It never escapes it. The way Thelonious Monk plays, it, he never escapes the slur of the slang of North Carolina. That's what he plays when he's playing two notes right next to each other. It's impossible to treat the migration as an isolated event, and it's impossible to tell it in the company of the other events. You just have to start talking. This is how we understand the music we play. We know it's simply not just a piece of music that we set up here and then we play it and it's that simple, but that all those layers behind it for us are the things that we have to continue to bring to the front. Migration history isn't just about the history of one community moving into a new area. It's about how newcomers confront each other and what they sound like to each other. And I think we've only begun to explore the, the surface of the connections that happen when we all end up here together. The only reason America exists in the way that it does is because of the contributions of every culture from around the planet. I think that these migrations remind us that there are many American stories and there is nothing that requires our attention and our care more than ensuring that we are always striving to tell the fullest and most complicated story about our nation.